All right, guys, y'all check this shit out. I shouldn't be videoing this driving, but, uh, you know, this is just badass right here. This is what you call dog-legging it down the highway. Y'all check this here Dodge out. Now, pro parties, take your damn long hours up and get home. That is something else right there now. That is just like being bow-legged or something. I'll be damned. I've seen some trailers go down the road sideways like that, but never have I seen the whole pickup truck going down the road like that. That is custom if I have ever seen custom. Not much of a Dodge fan at all. Uh, but yeah, craziest thing I've ever seen. I don't know, I can't imagine what they hit to knock that rear end out of alignment like that. But that's just something else. Anyway, we're headed to Tennessee, Kerryville. We get an Uber to the airport in Knoxville. We're gonna go on and put the hammer on this cat. Come on around him. See if we can get us a little shot here. Oh yeah. That is, looks like they got the rear end strapped in with a, uh, a damn, holy shit. Anyway, we're headed, we headed home, or, or to the airport to go home. I'll probably make some video of that. Well, what's going on, guys? I'm here in Carryville, Tennessee. That's us over there. waiting on my cab to get here tried to get an uber there's no uber in the woods no lift saw this guy just pull in 349 cat i don't know what kind of trailer this is it's a load king i don't think i've ever heard of that brand looks pretty good So he's running this on eight because he doesn't have a bucket or counterweight on this machine. Hopefully he don't mind if we film this ride here. It's a true tri-drive truck, um, which is something, well, I think it's a tri-drive. Yep, it's a tri-drive. That's something you don't see a lot of here in the South. Um, good looking truck though. I believe this is a set forward 567 set forward axle. And um, it's got his neck extension there. And uh, let's see. I don't know how many ton this trailer is. And I don't have my glasses on so I can't read it. But this is the back of the 349 and you can see right here. So they back the machine up to the counterweight. They put this pin in and the machine picks its counterweight up by itself. And since you can take that counterweight off, you don't have to run it on the multi-axle. And Big C, do I sound out of breath now? A lot of chest beaters in the comment section of YouTube. A lot of chest beaters. But anyway, this machine looks pretty good. This trailer looks pretty good. These are uh, 255 tires, and which is usually on a little smaller trailer. And this is a rigid spreader. You can see here how he's got his shims in there. Still pivots back here. And uh, see, I notice he's got his oversized load sign on the bottom. I should probably do that with mine. And get rid of the uh, the wind brakes there, the air brake. And that thing's really heavy. I'm kind of tired of it, to be honest with you. I'm, I might just have one built out of like phenolic or something to go there but anyway i thought you guys might want to see this 
Um, pretty interesting looking trailer. And uh, of course it's hard to beat the cat excavator. 349 is very, very popular or becoming popular. I guess it replaced the 345. Um, as this machine sets, no bucket, no counterweight. They weigh about 89,000. Bucket and counterweight, they range from 107 to 114,000. And of course, you got to have two trucks if you don't move it with a counterweight and bucket. So I don't know how that prices out differently. But I, I do see some of them from time to time where they pull the counterweight and bucket off of them. But yep, this is the Kerryville Pilot and TA. Um, it's the only place that I felt like I could leave the truck for the weekend. And we'll ease over here and talk with you about the crane a little bit more. Um, so I found out the crane originally come from South Africa about 10 years ago and it's been sold so I'm delivering it to its new owner in Folly Beach and um, it's in really good shape really good shape I guess for its age I mean I don't know its age given that American's been gone for quite a while now, I'm guessing it's over 20, 25 years old. And uh, that, uh, for that age of a piece of equipment, it really looks pretty good, if you ask me. So we did take the, where are we at here? The smokestack off because we were over 13.6, we permitted for 13.6. And see if I can open this up. Oh, well, they've got it tie wired. I'll open it up whenever I get parked um, at my, the night before my final destination. As you can see here, American Hoist Crawler Crane, 92.99. Here's all the hand signals. Keep it away from high power lines. And uh, diesel fuel, and this certainly doesn't run, have any def. No DEF, which is a good thing. It's got the air condition. Looks like the canopy up on top is flipped up. I should probably try to fix that. Looks like it's got a VHF radio in it. So where their crane yard was is on the river. And I believe it's JMI tugboat or something like that, marine services. They have barges and, and they push the cranes around and so forth. So, um, that's probably why to be able to talk to a tugboat or, or what have you. But this is it. This is the, uh, there's the TA and they have some parking over there. And I don't know if this is overflow or what, but there's the pilot. There's zero parking over there. And the old R model Mac. Let's go check that out. Maybe we won't get shot. Because that's a real truck there. I'm gonna walk my old out of breath ass over there. You know, I really do appreciate the comments on YouTube. Um, I'm just impressed that anybody even watches my videos. I know y'all all watch 
Dretchev's videos and he puts a lot of effort into his and, and I get it. I put none into mine other than just shooting some unedited footage and then I open up iMovie on my phone, click the ones I want, it splices them together and puts them up on YouTube. So it's all unedited footage. So this looks like and definitely looks like an R model. And doesn't look like, well, that might be a gold bulldog on there. If it is, it's worn. But probably not. Um, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yep, he's got gold on him. So that means if it's a gold bulldog, that means all the running gear, engine, transmission, everything is Mac. If it's silver, then that means something in there is not Mac. So this is the old Mac Camelback suspension. No, that don't look like Camelback. But maybe it is. It looks like the springs are backwards can't really see up in there but um this looks like a, a log truck obviously and uh true to form nothing like a dog this baby gets used and abused but Max tough. Just nothing out there that was, was any tougher. Those are definitely Mac rear ends. Pretty cool. Just don't see these anymore. Literally, the cab rusts off of it, the truck will keep going. It's a very cool old truck though. Cool logo. And there you go. Bad dog. I'm telling you, man, there's just none better. Absolutely none better. This truck's worn out and probably still better than that brand new Peterbilt sitting over there. Looks like his bolt for his uh, hinge for his hood there is about to fall out. Got the old Mac, that's probably where they plug her in for the block heater. Uh, I don't know, maybe, yep. You can see the power cord laying up in there. And that would be the battery box. Just can't beat it. Old girl, 11R 24.5s, Dayton wheels. Dayton wheels back here. And if you don't know what that means, so if you see these lugs, so you see the lug nuts, and then the cleat. So what that means, and then it's got a spacer. If you see the corrugated piece in the center, that's the spacer that goes between the two wheels. So when you put that on, you can get them out of alignment, and it'll still run. So what you do is you take your tire hammer, and you put it down up against the tire, as a gauge and then you spin the tire and then you can see where you need to adjust it to get it to run square. Now everything is hub piloted, um, which would be a bud wheel. But before bud wheels, um, or before hub piloted, you just had a standard bud wheel, which is just uh, like all of the wheels you see on these trucks here. And, and they just go together and then, so you had the stud that was on the hub. You put your first wheel on and then you had another inner outer stud that was like a lug nut that had a square on the end of it. You run that in there, that pulls the first wheel up tight and you put your next wheel on and then you had your outer nut which threaded on top of that inner stud, 
that's on top of the very inner stud and that's how that pulled that up um, things have come a long ways obviously but I'm just a dinosaur so I'm old school I still believe old school is better my wife says I'm analog and I guess that's the case well, we'll look at these. These are uh, these are probably old bud wheels. Nope, those are hub piloted. So what that means that it's hub piloted is this is the hub. If you see these right here, that pilots the wheel to line it up. So that makes that hub piloted. That is the latest and greatest. And uh, that truck there, of course, is running the uh, new wide base. They don't really call that a super single. It's called a wide base single. Super single would be like what's on the front of this truck. Like a 425, 445, 65. But these are just wide base. These are supposed to run cooler, get better fuel mileage. The only problem with it is when you blow out a tire, you're down. You can't limp it in, and it usually takes the wheel out with it. He's running Michelin, so he's got the right tires. But yeah, that's what's going on, guys. I, um,. Fireworks store. I'm waiting on my cab. Hopefully, he won't be too late. And I'm going to get on the airplane. Maybe get something to eat before I get on the airplane. Well, that's it. We um, go, see, go see my kid in the morning for his 18th birthday. He steps into a new set of shoes in life, one that he's probably not ready for. Of course, every kid can't wait, you know, they all say, I can't wait till I'm 18, I'm moving out. So he's told me that several times. But I will bet you that he is not moving out. So, you know, he starts college in the fall, which he'll, uh, live at home while he goes to college so if anybody wants to stop by here and polish all these wheels out while i'm gone and wax on this nasty beast feel free polish her up and somebody asked me about flat spots on tires let's see if i can show you so, I don't know if you can see that, but that is a flat spot. And how I did that is the first time running it, I forgot to charge the air on this axle, so it really wasn't putting any pressure. It was just had gravity pushing it down. And then whenever I mashed the brakes at the red light, it locked the tires up. And I seen in my mirrors all the smoke coming, so that means you're smoking your tires, right? And so I had to get out and deal with that. And uh, see if I can show you something on this side. But that's totally my fault. And, oh yeah, you can see these pretty good. So right here, let's see. So you see how this is slicked out and flat? Can you see that? So that is a true flat spot. It's a little flat there, but here, here's another flat spot. Here's another one. So that's how you take brand new tires and scuttle them up. Of course, these are all good to go. Um, 
and uh, that's it that's all we've got so might be some snakes up in here so that's all I got guys I'll be back